welcome to this session. We are going to talk about AGRIS, how it can help to provide access to agricultural research and technology information and possibly exploiting open data on the web. So this is the schema of our talk this uh, day. We're going to look at an introduction of what AGRIS is. Uh, we're going to split it as how so many people have uh, conceptualized it, who uses AGRIS, and then we're going to have um, some time to spend also on the AGRIS portal and see what you can actually do. And then seeing how you can retrieve full text of documents. This is one of the key questions that we normally get from our users. And lastly, we would look at the data submission workflow, which might not be interested interesting to some of our course participants, but mainly for our data providers or those that wish to be able to submit their data to AGRIS. A brief introduction. AGRIS was started in the uh, 70s to help uh, partners promote their scientific production. So when we talk of partners, we're talking about grey literature that was coming from agricultural ministries, the research centers from different countries. So then they would share their record with AGRIS and uh, AGRIS will at least have these uh, records as a way to know what was scientifically produced. So in practice, this core bibliographic repository was contributed by partners. So it was really um, a, a partnership arrangement. Uh, it started as a paper and I'm sure it followed the technology of CD. Now we have it as a, uh, available via a, a, a portal. So this we refer to as the AGRIS core data. So this is the data that came mainly from research and uh, grey literature in agriculture in different uh, scientific establishments. So it forms the core data. As we are going to see in our presentation how this data um, or this emanated into what we have today. So what can we say about AGRIS? So AGRIS is an international system for agricultural science and technology. So today it is a collection of more than 8 million multilingual bibliographic resources. So from a core, core collection of small resource, uh, bibliographic resources, um, it has grown to eight, more than 8 million. AGRIS can also be considered as a network of more than 150 institutions from 65 countries. So what we mean, what we mean here is that those people who contribute their metadata of their research and their output um, become part of the network. You can also call them as an AGRIS network. Over time, AGRIS has revolved, as I said in the beginning, uh, due to semantic technologies and uh, the current technologies of the web into a database, which we are not going to uh, look at tonight, today, but uh, just be aware that uh, AGRIS is considered as an RDF database. I will not, we will not get into this today, but now it is a web portal, so for the link that you receive from IBK, you will probably see the interface of uh, AGRIS. So who uses AGRIS? AGRIS is used by graduate students, by lecturers, by researchers, in academic institutions. AGRIS is also used by librarians, by catalogers and other information professionals, by publishers and professional associations and government officials also do consult AGRIS. In some cases, AGRIS becomes the oldest repository or the known visible repository of a collection in an institution because these records have been captured over time. Many have considered AGRIS as an abstract, I mean, I'm sure in your course today or in the, uh, during your course, you are learning of various sources of information. And uh, AGRIS, other people look at it as an abstracting or indexing service that can show or point to you where resources are. Let's take a look at brief, brief about the collection. These are statistics as good as June 2016. We still don't have any had now many yeah, the update so at that time we had 8.1 million multilingual uh, bibliographic um, records 400,000 were from Latin America about 150 
uh, thousands from Africa and uh, 760 from Asia, including uh, 400 from China. We estimate that 1.3 million of these links provide access to full text. Why we say 1.3 is because the current bibliographic records that we receive now, we receive them with a field of a URI link that most cases provide us uh, access to uh, the text online. We're going to see the value of these links to the address database. So the collection of these uh, full text include 31,000 books, uh, access to 366,000 bi bibliographies, um, conference papers, 286, journal articles, about 5 million, thesis, about 62,000, and 250,000 for others type of content. So you can already see from uh, the um, collection uh, that uh, of Agris as a whole that it is really mainly of com com composed of scientific works. Due to a lot of technologies, we uh, Agris is now composed about 250 million triples. This will not explain. This is in the same line as the RDF database that we talked about. It is available in a number of languages, the interface, and also due to some materials that we receive in these languages that we have, English, French, Spanish, Chinese, Italian, and the rest as you can see them. Agris network. So Agris is a network, as we have said, from um, countries that are coming from uh, all over the world. We have given you a link there. Let's try to a bit go to the live map if we can. And see that, uh, and see what we can see. I'm sure you are able to see the screen now. Then on the screen here, you are able to notice some of the some of the centers. If you go to the link that I gave you on the presentation, you will notice a number of centers. Um, we see have these centers from uh, developing countries. So if you click here, you are able to see the address and uh, the number of centers that you get. These are uh, more uh, in a single in a single country, right? So we are able to browse and see the collection in terms of from which country it is coming from. Uh, you are able to see which 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 one is contributing. For example, in these uh, links that I'm showing you. Okay, so. This shows you that Agris is a is a is a collaboration from a number of uh, countries, as I have shown before. So you can you can play around. If you take down this uh, link that you have on your screen, you are able to go to the page that I just showed you. We have received some of the records from uh, developing countries, as we have seen. But uh, not so many. But if you check on the link there, you will see where exactly these are coming from. Now, Agris, as we said, is a linked data site. What it means is that uh, uh, all records in Agris are indexed with uh, Agrovoc, usually by partner organization or also by automatically by the Agris processing center. So in a way, Agrovoc becomes the backbone to the query of a number of services or of a number of related databases that are there. Now, in this data set, what, remember in the beginning of this talk, we said we had Agris core data, which is the data we received from um, uh, participating institutions. Through the uh, advancement in technologies, uh, Agris data has been linked with existing uh, resources. For example, DBpedia, Nature, Open Search, World Bank, and other uh, agricultural data that are available elsewhere. In this way, what what the benefit this has done is to enrich the Agris data, which was just a bibliographic data, title, author, journal, article, as dry as it was, but we are able to link to other related data sets. For example, with through Agris, you can go to World Bank and see maps related to the article that you are looking at. Through Agris, you are going to be able to go to um, 
uh, geoplasm data which comes from uh, CGRIS geoplasm database. So we have these. You will see the list I put here was as true of June 31, 2016. So it keeps changing as and when new uh, available data sets are put and also as and when um, data sets become available online. Now, we have explained in basic what Agris is. Perhaps now we can transcend and go back to uh, the platform, as it were. Uh, we have given you the link. This is the link to the platform. Um, this is the interface. It gives you a very simple search. Uh, if you are, you are able to type in from the, from the search, you are able to search as you want. You can put your, you can refine your search. You can use Boolean operators, and when you do a search, you are able to to retrieve information. So we will try to run through the slides and see the pre-searched and features of this, and maybe we can do a two minutes live search and see whether we are able to do so. How to search the portal? Simple search. We've given you the the interface, you type in as you search on Google, and you click enter, you'll be able to retrieve. Now, this is one of the classic page views. I like this page because it's very sim simple for demonstration. So if you search there, it will give you the search results. For example, the query here was uh, agriculture, and it will give you a list of um, searches. You can also filter your search here and also you can use agrovoc keywords um, here to be able to 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 limit your search so there's a number and also you can limit by content type i want to search also in only in journals i want to search in books conferences you are able to do that now uh, this is one of a classic page that we also use recently to show you uh, the impact of this. I will just go back, if you allow me, to this slide where I talk about uh, Agris core data linked to some of uh, existing data sets available online, which are free. If you come here to the page that I was, you see that there's this record here that we show here called Identification and Mapping of QTLs uh, for Drought Tolerance introgressed from Ozia glaberima into indicate rice. So this is the record we have. No? Through the agrovoc keywords that are assigned here, you are linked to you are linked to to, to the uh, map that is related to this. You are also linked to uh, the data sets that we get from uh, Bioversity. And also, you are able to see here uh, online from the Google API other related links and searchings from either the title or also the keywords. And also, this is very useful. I will explain why later. Remember, we said some of the records that we have on Agris don't come with a URL. Perhaps another copy is available on open access through the Google API. Um, once you go through Agris, we are able to pick this record. For example, you see that this identification and mapping, where I put my mouse here, I'm sure it's not clear, you can see the title, which means you can click there and already get um, uh, access to this resource. Then also you are linked to other resources, as you see below. Um, the interface has changed a bit, but it will show you also the source of the record as we are going to see it. This is very useful as we are going to explain why in cases where you cannot get the full text. This is the classical view. We are also going to show you how you access the classical view and the benefits of doing so. The classical view offers a little, a little bit of more uh, parameters to limit your search. Uh, for example, as you can see in the classical view, you can search here and limit by a data provider or by a country, by a content type. Also, you can put a multilingual search here. You can define here and say, look, I want to search in all the languages or I want to search in English alone. 
So here is an example of filtering in the classic view. Uh, you can also filter in the classic view, right? You can also filter here by data providers. So for example, you can search by country and feature this. We have to tell you that uh, usually because this is or relying so much on the availability of the services online. Sometimes you might find this might not work, not because of Agris, but because maybe our data provider or other resources are not available online. Let's try to do a little bit of, uh, of a search. Let's hope we will be able to be lucky. So we die, which I share with you my screen and we try to do a live search. So here is the search for Agris. Maybe we search for rice. You will see is uh, is um, here are the results as we show you for rice, and also you see the linked information. I always prefer to search in the classical view. But let's try to search again for another common agriculture. There we are, so you can able to do. So these are the articles that we have. Let's see if we have uh, um, an interesting article. I usually let's take um, oh, this one. Okay, so here is another example. I'm sure you are seeing the screen running and, and, and scrolling and picking up resources from somewhere else. This is an example of an article, research activities in the Faculty of Agriculture. The abstract is here and the authors and their affiliation. And then on this uh, right hand side, you are able to see the related information that is available online via the Google widget. And here it only shows data coming from Teka that is also linked to Agris. There are two little icons here access the resource PDF, PDF. What it means is that the Google AP has managed to get us two links and tabs for us to get this article online because it is available. Uh, online and then you can see the other subjects that we have from here. Uh, if we go back to our search page just try to see with the classic view mm, I don't know let's search for maize and see what we are going to get. No, For maize there we are so we can even we talked about you using refine you can refine here uh, you can search by content type. Maybe let's assume our search results were were 100 and 1,000. Let's try to limit them by. I only want to search in um, general papers. You can see now that I've reduced it to 58,000, and I have these results that are here. Access type wherever there is an icon, it shows that this resource is available online. In some cases which is the interesting part like this one. We have two access icons. This means that this article is available in two repositories. No? So this is a, a, a interesting part. So you can click this repository. You can access it here on Springer. In some cases, you un, it takes you to a limited re, um, reference online, which perhaps like this one, you cannot get for free access. Let's see with this one again what we are going to get. Here is the other existence of the record and uh, we are able to download the article. So here we got this article from from uh, National Agricultural Library and here it is. But remember also we tried the other link and it took us to a paid site. So with the advantages of uh, having two, which means the first icon you could not get the full text in the source but the second one you can which is the advantage of having um, uh, Agris being able to use the, the availability of, uh, of, say, of URLs and, and existence of uh, still limited uh, or existence of uh, repositories that are available online. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation and see that how we can um, uh, continue with the functionalities in, uh, in, in in Agri. So we invite you to play around these um, um, filters and see 
how much you can. We also have put multilinguality here. As I have explained, you can click there. We have published a detailed blog on, 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 on our aims on how you can play around with the multilinguality functions. How to research and retrieve full text document? I've just exemplified one uh, way to search. Let's remember that Agris was not designed initially to be a full text repository of, um, of uh, documents, but was a bibliographic repository. So uh, 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 articles that are available full text on Agris are the only ones that have a certain existence online. So through the Google API, we are able to retrieve them. So Agris becomes, um, through the cooperation with Google, and Agris is able to bring these articles to you, otherwise in cases where you will not be able to do so. How do you do it? So you can go to the filter page again in the classical view. You filter records that contain explicit links to full text. So once you do that, it will change, so you do your search, it will change all these um, what, uh, results and filter and remove all those that don't have uh, links to the full text. So you see the little, little tab that we saw in the beginning. Once you click there, you are able to retrieve. For example, this article, we retrieved it from the, um, we retrieved it from the Open Knowledge Repository from the World Bank. Okay, so we are able to play around with a lot of features. Now, I would like also to show you a little bit in cases where, there are some cases where you are searching in Agris and then you do not find the full text of the record. In such cases, what do you do? Where can you, where can you find the full text? I will exemplify also by uh, sharing my screen so you could see. For example, in the previous search that I executed, I searched uh, about maize, right? Uh, we see that from this one, this one, number third of our results has an access to the resource. But number one, for example, this one, seems it doesn't have access to the resource. Let's see whether we can try two things. Yeah? There are two things that you can do. For example, if you have this one, which is the title, if you come here, we seem to be have, according to Google API, it has given us something. Let's see whether it can give us access to the resource. So we go through the Google API. Unfortunately, it's taking us to the publisher page. So in this case, we do not have access to the full re resource. But in this case, already because of Agris, we are able to see as a finding aid, as an abstract aspect, whether we can get this. But in some cases, when our, on our records, let me just go back and see. In some cases, our records, they come with the contact information. I just want to see, I just search again so that you can see on another one is still taking time. Let's search for rice is usually a very simple subject. Let's see whether we can what we can retrieve from this record. In some cases, a record comes, if you check on Agris, it comes with, we want to see on top here on this, it comes with the source of the record. What does this mean on the source of the record? Um, Agris provides you access to this seared ring. The seared ring is a catalog of uh, sources of the record. So if you click on that uh, source, in this case, let's see, still taking time to pick things from the web. Okay, this one doesn't show a source. Let's just check if I can be so lucky to exemplify. So in that way, when you go to this to the to the seared source, you are able to see a ring. You are able to get the you are able to get the link or the source, the address. So in such in such cases, I don't I think it's taking time. In such cases, um, you should be able to get in contact with uh, the institutions that provided access to 
these resources for us for example you go and contact national library and say of of the u.s national agricultural library of the u.s i saw on agris uh, a link to this article could you give me a copy it could be that that article is not existing in in in, in electronic format and they could scan it and send it to you so in future as we have said in our title, Agris records uh, and Agris will link to various data sets that are available. We already linked to to maps. We already linked to uh, genome data and other type of data that are, uh, are being explored to see whether we can link the core Agris data to this data. In this way, through Agris, we are facilitating the discovery of related. Uh, data that is open and that is available on the internet. So we would like to talk briefly about uh, how to submit data to Agris. Most of our colleagues get to ask us a lot of questions. Agris allows and is able to accept people who are producers of data. I've given you here on the on the slide the links to the AXTEM. AXTEM is a platform that we use to interact with our data providers. If you click on that page, you will also um, see this. And then you, you should be able to create uh, a, an account on AXTEM. And then once you create an account, then you need to process the request and then you activate your 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 request is going to be act activated and then you have an account why this uh, logging on to axtem axtem allows you to upload your data in the way that it is able to be read for example to check to clean the data to look at the xml to see whether the xml conforms to agris ingesting standard and to clean up your data before your data is published i share to you with all of you the a blog that we published that allows or explains to you how to be able to submit data and interact with um, uh, Agris team in terms of data processing. In some cases, perhaps you have um, a, a repository that has got uh, agricultural research papers which you want Agris to harvest metadata from. In this case, also, you have to register on the AXTEM link that you have here, uh, we'll show it with a pointer. So in this um, link, you should be able to um, link to, uh, to, to the platform. So you're also free to contribute your data that is available or that is, uh, that is uh, open or a data that you want to share or to be indexed by, uh, by Agris. So in this way, in a nutshell, we've seen that Agris is a, con a, a bibliographic database made by partnerships and contributions coming from the community. This core data was mixed and or was uh, linked to other related data sets open on the net. And then it has been exposed through the uh, AgroVoc uh, backbone and linked open data technologies. We are able to use that um, core data or to use any of the Agris data to find related data on the web and thereby enriches in the search of the user and to allow the user to be able to interact and to get more data. So there are still more data sets to be searched, for example, for maps, for, for, for uh, agro-census agro data, and pictures. There's a whole lot of other data sets that could be enriched that could map agris. Actually, a more holistic search and allows users allow users to interact with it so well. I think for now I've given you some useful sources that you can get information about Agris. Um, uh, some of the links I've given to you, but also if you go to Elis, uh, Elis, you could find here on number four some of the articles that we have published about the back end of Agris, about the front end of Agris, and also about how Agris works. We hope also in the future to be able to give you the future direction of Agris and how it will um, go on in making sure that uh, open data and linked open data technologies are used to be able to discover and also to make the agricultural information and open data available online. 
I think I have uh, promised to stay for 30 minutes and uh, for now I thank you all and uh, I'll be glad to take any questions that